Hey, Joseph here from Job Concept. Um, today we're going to be looking at a package, um, modeling and then animation sort of. So this um, tutorial is pre-recorded. I just wanted to clarify that it's pre-recorded. So I know that it's going to be a three-part tutorial. So, but then this is what we're going to be looking at, how to create something like this. So if I play through, you have this kind of animation how we can create this kind of animation where you have the liquid pouring then the package coming up then all these things that is what we're going to be looking at in this tutorial so we'll start with setting up the real flow using real flow to set up the liquid then we're going to also look at the package how we can use MoGraph to bring up this package up then the third tutorial will now be how we will create a UV unwrap for this and go and texture this in Photoshop. So let's just get into the tutorial. But before we get there, I would like to implore you to please like my tutorials, share it because it helps me. And also, if you are new to my channel, please do subscribe because I do tutorials like this every time. So let's just get into the tutorial. Okay, so I'm going to start by creating a figure object just for scale, then put in the um cube object so i'm just going to quickly scale this down okay i think we're going to bring this back to the origin but then let's see let's go with 10 five then let's try that okay so I think I'll work with this. So I'll just delete this and take this to the coordinates and zero it out. So S to scale this to frame up to this. Then another thing I'm going to do is go to object and fillet that. And I'm going to bring the fillet to four. So let me explain why I want to do this. And B. Um, let's bring this fillet radius down. One. Let's still go down. 0.5. So I'm looking for a way where I can have one at the middle here. So counting to be um, symmetrical sort of. So I know even number would be fine for me. So if I go to four, I have the one that I can use to be the cutting edge. Then I have those. So that's why I'm doing that. So I'm just going to NA for shaded mode. So what I have now, I'm going to duplicate this. I'll call this the container this is the package container so it's going to be package container then I'm going to alt G to group that also alt G to group this so I'll call this liquid setup and I'll call this the package the packaging setup so I will now that I have this, I am going to hide the packaging. Let's work on the liquid first. So I'll select this and just edit this, convert it to editable format. So once I have it converted to editable format, the next thing I'm going to do is to quickly start setting up this object. So sorry, I'm trying to. Okay, so I have this. Go to polygon mode. Select this polygon object. I don't know what's wrong with my mouse lately. I'm deleting the top. UL, select this loop. And then UF, hold down shift, select this. Then delete. So if I go to my polygon mode or my vertex mode, I still have this because I'm using R19. So I'll just right click, optimize. It's going to get rid of those ones. So I have that. Then the other thing I'm going to do is, because I'm going to be pouring liquid on this, I need some thickness. So I don't want to come back here and start changing of stuff. So I'll go to polygon mode, control A, D for extrude. I'm going to activate my create cap. Then I'm going to scale this up just a little bit, just more. So this is what I want to do. Then another thing I also want to do is, if I bring up this a little bit, package, I want this to scale down a little bit. I mean the liquid container. 
So I'll just go to scale and bring it down just a tad touch. All right, so the reason is because the liquid is going to be contained in, so I want the package to fill up that shape. So I'll hide this. And don't mind the, um, what's it called? The thickness, because I'm actually not going to be showing this um, cube. So I actually just need the thickness. Once I'm done with the liquid, I'm going to hide this from my render, so you are not going to see that. So if I select this and I go to X-ray, let's start bringing up this real flow object so i'll go to real flow um, emitter circle emitter go to my move to make sure my object is so i'm going to scale this down just so much that i know that it's going to fill up okay, so scale this down also still sorry my mouse is Okay, so sorry, I want to change my mouse. So I'll just scale this down, touch, and bring it down to be sure of the scale. I think this is fine. Okay, so I'm just going to skip the whole try and error and just go up. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I've worked with this scale, and I know that if I'm to work with this default value, I won't really have anything. All right, so I won't really have anything. You can see that you can barely see your particle. So I know that I need to go with a value, and I know the values. I'll just go with this value. So, but then before I do that, I'll click on my real flow to my daemon. I'll just throw this open. First off, bring my gravity, bring my drag, bring noise field, shader, then K volume. So for the K volume, I'm going to scale this down and go to one of the views orthographic view just take this up just move it up a little bit and scale this in go to the front view ctrl z remove this and scale this also in so i'm fine with this then I'll just go to this key volume under the fall off, remove this visibility. For the noise, I'm going to take this noise. I'm going to reduce the strength of this noise. So I'll just try 20. And that's that. I think that's pretty much everything I need to do here. And then if I go to my fluid, I'm going to change this to SPH. And also, I am going to change this to 500 just to show you. And if I simulate this, you notice that we're going to get more. You can see we have more particles. Okay. So I will also, let's increase this a little bit. Just to scale this up a little bit. Then for this emitter, I am going to increase this to 300. Because I know 200 will not fill up this. Then I'll bring this up to like 120 frames. Okay, so we have that. Play, we have this. So we want this to interact with this geometry right now. So it's not, so it's just going through the floor and it's being killed by the kill volume. So I'm going to go to this guy and let's just take this into the setup first off. Okay. So I'm going to, uh, what am I doing? Okay, so I'm going to select this cube, right click on it, go to reflow tag, collider, go back, right click, reflow tag, volume. So I'll go to the reflow tag, bring the collision distance down to 0 0.01. I don't want bounce, so I'm going to reduce the bounce touch and bring this friction a little bit up. So something like that. Then I'll go to this volume. I'm going to change this from inside, solid inside to shell. I'm going to change the cell size to probably one or zero point. I think I use zero point two. I'm not sure or one five. So let's go with two first. And if it doesn't 
go quite well we change that so i think that's pretty much what i'm changing here then for the fluid i'm going to activate the compute vorticity and let me see what i have so i have this okay i'm still going to bring up the um, resolution I'm just okay so i want to I want a, an effect whereby the liquid start pouring and then it hits this wall and then creates more of a splash. And that's what I'm looking for. So what I'll do is I'll select this emitter, rotate, and just rotate it to the side a little bit so that it can simulate and touch the wall of this, something like that. I think I could still go. All right, something like that. Okay, so another thing I'm going to do is to change the resolution. So let's try 2000 before I start simulating. Okay, so I have that. I think I'm going to scale this down a little bit. It's quite so much. Do that again, scale. Possibly rotate this. It's kind of too much. The rotation is quite too much. So let's see. So what I'm doing is I'm just rotating this a little bit too. And also because I want to um, break the movement so what i'm going to do is i'm going to right click on this cube go to simulation tag add a vibrator then the vibrator i'm going to just activate the rotation and bring this to let's say five 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 and i want to increase this to four so it vibrates a lot faster oh sorry not the cube adding it to the emitter i'm so sorry so this cube change this back to zero so that everything is fine. So if we look at this, you see what is happening with this um, thing. I like that. So for the emitter, let's bring this again. So that's done. And the other thing I'm going to do is still come back. So I just want to change all these things so that I can start my simulation. Straight up. So I'm going to bring this resolution up to say 4,000 because of um, tutorial purpose. And the reason why I'm doing this is because if I'm to look at the scale, if I worked with the initial scale of the figure, I wouldn't have gone this high. So because the scale is quite low, small, that's why I can go this high. So it's very important for you to know that. So once I'm done with this, I'll just go to my scene go to the solver i'm going to go over to the cache just create a cache folder where i'm going to place this so i just go to this and make a new um, liquid sim 01 so this is what i want to simulate on then i'm going to just build the cache so I'm going to pause this while this builds and once it's done, I'm going to get back and show you what we have. Just hold on for me. All right, so I've quickly done a test simulation. So just to show you, you notice this. So what I want is you notice it start falling and I purposely did this so that I can know where to stop my simulation. So I see that this object fills up to this place. So I'm going to create a simulation such that it stops at roughly 50, 52 thereabout. So what I'm going to do is I'll go to 50, go to my emitter, make this zero keyframe and come like two frames backward and bring this to 300 and keyframe that. So once I have that, I'm going to simulate that. So another thing I'm going to do is I'll go back to this and increase the bounce because if you look at this now i don't like the way it's going it's not really bouncing the way i want i want the splash to really go all right so 
I'll have that. Then another thing I'm going to do is just up this um, resolution to somewhat 8,500 thereabout. Then I'm going to sim cache this simulation and that will be the end of this. Then we'll talk about, so I'm just going to close, remove this and then cache simulation. And once this is done, I'm going to come back and show us what we have. All right, so I'm here. It takes me three minutes and two seconds to do that, and it's just 200 megabytes. So let's just look at what we have. So we have this playthrough and that. So we actually don't have enough. So I'm also going to still increase this. All right, so let's just change this again. So I'm going to go to this. Uh, so this is where the back and forth comes in. So let's make this, uh, let's say 350, start with, keyframe that, bring this up a little bit. And then I'm still going to work on this bounce. Let's bring this friction down. So if I right click and go to default, so we have this as a default. So let's just cache this again, delete and cache. All right, so we are here. If you look at what we have, this is the effects we have. Okay, so this is fine. I like that because I'm also actually going to hide this so we don't really need to see that. So if I hide this, this is what this is giving us. And I like the way this bounces up the splash and I love that. So what I'm going to do next is to go over to my real flow and add a measure. So if I add a measure to this, for the measure I'm going to change this to quad, medium and bring this down to maybe 2.5 and just quickly build that. And 2.5 might be too small or too big rather, rather just 1.5, build the mesh and I could still go to one. All right. And let's try 0 0.7. This just want to get a, a decent amount of resolution before I start smoothing this. So I'll just smoothing this guy. And once I have this guy smoothing, and I'm also, if you look at this top, I want to kind of thin it a little bit. So I'll just thin this and then I have this effect. All right, so this is fine. Then what I'm going to do now is I'll go back to my scene and I'm going to cache the mesh so that I can have this mesh cached out. So I'm just going to do that and come back once this is done, all right? All right, so I have my mesh cached. So I'm just going to go and play through. So I can actually close this. If I, if I check this now, you have this effect play through and this is fine I so much like this you can see that all right so um, I'm falling in love with this so I think I'm going to just stop here and in the next tutorial I'm going to show you how we can set up this um, package and do the package setup do the animation for the package and then texture this object so if you feel this was helpful please do give me a like and a thumbs up and if you are new to my channel, please do subscribe to this channel because I do tutorials like this every time. And uh, do have a wonderful day and God bless you. Bye.